Well, good morning, Grace Lutheran Church and School. Hope this week you've been a blessing to someone, especially your family and your friends. Last time we spoke about Independence Day, and we're going to revisit that again, the 4th of July, that celebrates the Declaration of Independence of the United States in the year that all occurred, 1776. And if you recall that, we started with 1 Peter 1, 3, that speaks about our birthday of holy baptism. It read, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And so we're going to continue today with the rest of that birth, with that verse. We are born again up to the living hope, to an inheritance and in, that's imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven. So last time the subject was of independence and birth. This time it's we're born now. And so we move on to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. The blessing of July 4th, 1776, is an inheritance of freedom. We're not supposed to be cut out of our inheritance or that will of freedoms that's been born of independence, yet many are. Take the defenseless babies who are subject to abortion or those who are victims of senseless violence or the aged people who are often taken advantage of by sometimes those closest to them for the sake of greed and covetedness. If you've ever witnessed people fighting over an inheritance, you witness some of the most unhappy people in the world. Money and acquisitions of other possessions trump all decency in the family war of inheritance in the world. There's a saying, in the world where there's a will, not there's a way, there's a family fighting over that will. I pray that you know no children who think they're entitled to their parents' money. It just is, starts a bunch of problems. But God operates much differently when it comes to his children and their inheritance. Romans 8, 17 reads, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Even if our parents leave us no inheritance, we're owned children and heirs of God. And inheritance, it's a legal term of wills and testaments. It's affected by relationships that start with our new birth and adoption in baptism when it comes to God. In baptism, we're no longer slaves to sin. We're a child of God and heir of all his promises and estate. And his inheritance never perishes, never spoils, never fades. It's a divine inheritance that he keeps safe for us in heaven. It'll be revealed in the last days. A couple things about inheritance and a will. A will requires a qualified testator. Well, Jesus is the testator of our will, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That's from John 1, 17. A will has to be witnessed. Well, miracles of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus are witnesses, and so at his baptism were the Father and the Holy Spirit we're witnesses of Jesus. Any person who's been disowned knows the pain and hurt it causes because we don't want to be left out or disowned. And unless you're devoid of attachment and security and identity found in family, uh, it really just hurts. Family's powerful and it's a powerful life force that can secure our love and make us feel wanted and belonged, or it can wreck our lives with pain. 
So perhaps the saddest reality outside of a, a legal and a financial will or the dimensions of inheritance is when people isolate themselves and they disinherited everyone, it's disinherited everyone else. We all understand isolation pretty well during this year of coronavirus. It's not fun. The virtual time of acquaintances that disinherits us from the comforts of touch and compassion. These are but examples, though, and they come from the world, and it's sin that really cuts us out of the Father's will. But it doesn't have to. God doesn't kick us out to fend for ourselves. He sends his Son to be one of us. And through faith in Jesus, we're adopted and we're made a child of God. Full rights of family membership are ours because our sins are forgiven. And our legal right to heaven is the shed blood of Jesus. And the rights that we inherit, they're eternal, and we celebrate our inheritance now already in word and sacrament. What a blessing. What an inheritance that can never perish, can never spoil, never fade, that's kept in heaven for you and me. And that inheritance is all because of what God did. He sent his son. What Jesus did. He went to the cross as our substitute. He never sinned. He kept the law perfectly. And he paid the price for our sin. And because of what the Holy Spirit did in creating faith in us. Hebrews 9 talks about wills and inheritance. Therefore, he, Jesus, is a mediator of a new covenant or will, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. For where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. We know that was established with Jesus on the cross when he sent his spirit to his father and said, it is finished. When did Jesus give us his last will and testament? The last supper is given by Jesus. That is his last will and testament. So the maker of the will died. His body broken in death for you and me as our substitute. His blood shed for you and me for the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus annuls the law of sin. And he ratifies and confirms his last will and testament with his own blood and resurrection. The will of Jesus is published for us all to read. It's called the gospel. It's called the holy word of scripture. It's called the Bible. His word and his promises. You can take them to the bank, the bank of heaven. Remember your freedom, your reborn again, and remember your inheritance kept in heaven for you by our Lord Jesus Christ. Till we meet again, go in peace, serve your Lord, be a blessing this week. God bless you all. See you on Wednesday worship and Sunday worship, Grace Lutheran Church, here in the Plata. God bless you. Amen.